Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. It's opening week in the NFL, and today we have two teams who are more than ready to get the season underway. It's the Cowboys going up against the Eagles. With that, let's call in our commentators, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis, with this opening week matchup. Thank you, Larry. It's the NFL on EA Sports as you take a look live there at Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia, PA. The scene a few moments ago, here it is. It's unlike any other in sport as both teams made their way out of the tunnel. These folks are fired up as their guys are ready to do battle between the Dallas Cowboys and the Philadelphia Eagles. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, you look at this Eagles team as they interplay here. An early season tilt, and when it's an early season tilt, should be ready to roll. Well, let's face it, the aches and pains haven't really set in yet, and both teams eyeing a really good start to get things going. Meanwhile, for the visitors here, the Cowboys, and I don't think from what we saw down on the field before the game, there's any doubt they're ready to roll. They pass the eye test, don't they? This team looks fired up and ready to play. So now here comes the Eagles offense as they get ready to take over. They'll be led out by their 6'5 quarterback out of North Dakota State. It's Carson Wentz. He didn't have as many throws. plays in college as many of the quarterbacks that were coming out in the draft but he maximized what he had ended up winning two national championships as a starting quarterback at North Dakota State and an alley to run and he gets this one just shy of the 40 they'll mark him down at the 39 a good gain of 14 there and it moves the chains well, one unit I know you want to watch is that offensive line. If they keep clearing holes like that, it could be a long night defensively. No doubt about it, because when they are in sync, as we're seeing so far, when that continuity is there, and you can see that they're playing off of each other while controlling the defensive front linebackers, you're exactly right. It could be a very long night for the defense, because someone's going to run for some big yardage. And the tight end, Zach Ertz, is key in this offense as we get a look at the starters. Comes out of the factory known as Stanford, which keeps putting out tight ends. Zach Ertz, one of the better ones we've seen in recent years. Ten yards still left on second down. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. Call it no gain on the run. They're looking at a third down. And now the defense for Dallas. I think most people locked in on Byron Jones when he came out of UConn at the NFL Combine where he darn near jumped out of the stadium because of his vertical leap. But there's so much more to his game than that. Play cornerback and safety in college, and they can use that same ability to move him around in the NFL in order to create great matchups. On play action, it's Wentz. Throwing right, and that's complete. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. They call it a gain of 19, and it moves the chains. So opening drive, third down. They complete the slant to move the sticks. And ordinarily, it's a high percentage pass when you throw it. And receivers like to run that route because it gets the ball in their hands pretty quickly. Just a couple of quick steps upfield, break towards the middle, the ball should be there, and then they can get do some work afterwards. To throw is Wentz. Quick hitter here, it's complete. Give him nine there on the first down completion. And boy, they had high praise for this rookie receiver when we asked the coaches about him, didn't they? They certainly did, and obviously they liked his measurables, otherwise they wouldn't have brought him onto the team. Height, weight, speed, all of that. But how about what they really said? Competitiveness. That's what they really liked about him. The way he goes after the football, competes for it, and decides when it's in the air, it's his and only his. Second and one is often an invitation to take the big shot downfield. I'll bet the offensive lineman said, are you kidding? We just get on our backs and let's go get the first down. They love being physical. On the run, it's Pumphrey. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. 
This has been a good drive so far, and it's been the running game for the most part that's powered them down there. Another nice burst there, picking up a first down. Now it's first and ten, as you said, in the red zone. Wentz now on first down. And he's going to be dropped back at the 15-yard line. David Irving able to collapse the pocket and drop him for a loss of three. And it's never good to take a sack. You really don't want to take one down here in this part of the field down near the red zone. Not at all because you're already pretty much assured of a field goal. But you take a big sack, it could push you out of range. And that's why defenses get a little more aggressive in this situation. They're almost conceding the three points. They want to push you back and try and take you out of that. In today's NFL, when you get teams in long yardage situations with your defense, you're really going to go to your speed packages. You're going to get smaller, lighter guys on the field in order to cover the expected pass. So they might want to run the ball against a smaller, lighter lineup with your big guy. This is taken in by Jeffrey. He's got it. Touchdown, Eagles. Sean Jeffrey, his first touchdown as a member of the Eagles. And the Eagles drive right down the field and score on the opening drive. Excellent start there. First drive of the season, big-time success, putting it in the end zone. And remember, that was done without any real map of how to do it. In other words, the deeper you get into the season, you get game film to work off of, tendencies to work off of. The first drive of the season, Things can be entirely different than what you've seen in the past. It's a really good job of execution by them. Sturgis out now to kick this one off. Here comes Ryan Switzer to return it. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. So here are the Cowboys now ready on offense for the first time. They'll be led out by Dak Prescott, the 135th pick of the draft back in 2016 from Mississippi State. One thing he does very well, he takes care of the football. Had 176 pass attempts to start his career without an interception. That's the most in NFL history. And finished his rookie year, 23 touchdown passes and only four interceptions. First down, Prescott. The catch made by DeAndre Hopkins. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. Now, Charles, what's the mindset here offensively? You gave up the touchdown pretty quickly. Would it have changed if you had gotten a stop, and it would be 0-0 right now, or no? I wouldn't think so. I think in most cases, just down a touchdown, you know, I mean, we're just getting started here. Should... He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, Nigel Bradham. And his crew will take over at their own 45-yard line. And that's a great example of ball skills right there, partner. You and I do a lot of games, and I can't tell you how many guys look to run with the football before they've intercepted it. So that's a nice job of focusing on the interception. So after the INT, here's Wentz. Jeffrey reels it in over the middle. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Give him 11 at time and a new set of downs. Someone sharp in this game. I mean, a touchdown pass on the first drive and comes right back, and he's flinging it around really well here. A really nice throw there to pick up the first down. You, you kind of just feel a laser focus and confidence about him, and I think we saw that this week, didn't we? Talking to him and the coaches, they felt good about his performance coming up. Yeah, I was really impressed with that last practice we saw when they went through two-minute drill, when they went through all the different situations. Ball hardly hit the ground, and I thought, yeah, he might be locked in for this one. Finding his safety valve here. Lead. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. We always talk about having to read defenses and how complicated that is. No, bottled up. Fumble. It's out. It's loose. It's picked up by the Cowboys. And his crew will take over with a football at the 35-yard line. They may have the edge on the scoreboard, but that hasn't made them pass it, has it? I mean, they've, they dialed up a pretty good run blitz there. And, and, and Brandon, you know that all blitzes aren't just designed to get to the quarterback in the pass. Or sometimes you're just trying to take away every gap 
every hole that might be created in the running game, and they did it to perfection and caused a fumble there. Took away the gaps, took away the holes, took away the football. Here's the first carry for Ezekiel Elliott. And able to use his blockers to get this up over the 40. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Well, that run right there was an offensive line coach's dream, wasn't it? Guys picked up all of their assignments, created a nice gap for the running back to get through. Pick up seven yards. Yeah, he's probably chortling on the headset right now, saying, we got it going, boys. Let's keep it going. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. Boy, he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision. Straight ahead, peripheral. Also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. And that helps set him apart from many of the other bats in the league. Crace can't find one. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. A play, and it's second down. And the Buffet Boys, the O-line. Hopefully they're ready today. Listen, you got to feed them first. But if you do, you usually get a great product out on the field. And when they play well, the quarterback can't wait to feed them afterwards. They'll try to throw now. Prescott. It's a short one here. Could be tied in. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. I think it's okay there they didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. Completes it to the rookie from North Carolina, Ryan Swift. Touchdown, Cowboys! A big play there, 49 yards. And the Cowboys are an extra point away from tying the football game. I know these wide receivers are about flash and dash and high-flying plays, but a good number of them played running back at some point in their career, and that's how they finish off a lot of their big plays, run after the catch. And this time he finishes off the big play in. It's good, and we're all tied at seven apiece. The drive summary that time, five plays, and it's capped off with a Cowboys touchdown. The end zone. And he'll wind up getting an extra couple yards here for his trouble as he'll bring this one out to the 27. And just one tick to go, so this will obviously be the final play of this first quarter. They go play action here on first down. He's got his man on the crossing route. 20, 10, and he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Philadelphia. A big play there with his first career touchdown in his first career game. And the Eagles have taken the lead. So we just witnessed touchdown number one for the Rook, and certainly that's a football he's going to want for the trophy case. Yeah, this is one that you don't spike, right? This is one you don't throw to your teammate and let them celebrate. This is one you keep for yourself, take it over to the equipment staff and have them mark it up, put it away, and then you get it later on. And as you said, mount it in your trophy case. Fantastic. Hopefully the first of many. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. So that'll do it for the first quarter as we kick off another season. It's the Eagles with the early lead. And we're back to Philadelphia after this. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Back live with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. It's the Eagles with the ball here to begin quarter number two as we'll see one following the score on the final play before break. Sturgis out now to kick this one off. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the inline. 
And now Dallas gets set to take the field. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. And yeah, this one caught by Des Bryant. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A good pick up there, 26 yards. Prescott on first down. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out, incomplete. That's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. On second down, Elliott. And they'll get him down here at about the 42. Second down, a little more productive than first. Seven yards on the gain. It gets him to third and three now. Kid had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. And he's got room. And he slides to avoid the hit. A really nice pickup of 14 yards, and it moves the sticks. Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? Encroachment defense. So five yards there is one of the big guys up front moved. And in a 4-3 front, you've got the two defensive tackles right near the football. I know there's a lot of movement around there, but they're always taught to have one eye on the football. Apparently, that didn't happen. After the penalty, it's Elliott. And he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. I'm getting the sense that Fletcher Cox is making offensive linemen want to take the week off when they have to play against him. <laughs> it's a regular routine for him, isn't it? It really is. That play there, that's him all day long. Good luck trying to block him and keep him from disrupting your offense. No dice this go around. He's hit behind the line and taken down. He lost two there, and it's third down. Count me as a little bit surprised by what we just saw there because this has been a pretty long drive. And normally you think that wears down a defense. In this case, looked like the offensive line held him down a little bit. They allowed the penetration and the ability to stuff him for a loss. And that is incomplete. The effort's always going to be there. Everyone's always going to try and make a catch. But underthrown balls, I think, are the toughest ones to come back and get because usually. Your momentum's going in the opposite direction when you're trying to stop, break, and come back and get it. And Bailey able to knock it through. And they'll cut the lead back down to four now at 14-10. So it goes down as an eight-play drive, and they cap it with the field goal. Yeah, they were able to pick up a few first downs along the way, but they couldn't keep the momentum going all the way into the end zone. On the return, here comes Keith Mumphrey. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30 to the 33-yard line. The Eagles offense back out onto the field. And following that long touchdown pass, a one-play drive last time. Let's see if the defense, you, you know they're ready. They don't want that to happen again. And you would have thought they would have been ready the yeah, last that's time. That's I mean, true. that's what you work on all the time. Make sure that no one gets behind you. That's the cardinal sin of defense, not giving up the long pass. They did. Let's see how they adjust. Under four to go now as the clock runs, and they come up on second down. Wins to throw on second down. Throwing for his running back, and he's got it complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. And the play goes for 19 yards, gives him a new set of downs. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. Now a play fake here on first down. And seeing no options, he just tosses this one away incomplete. Now that'll bring up second down. What's the old adage? Be quick, but don't hurry. 
Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. That ball had to be getting rid of, otherwise he was going to get sacked. Now Wentz on the bootleg. Caught right side is Jeffrey. And it's a fumble. And it's picked up by the Cowboys. Get this one out to the 50 to the midfield stripe. We have seen this before, and we know coaches preach about this and work on it all the time. Catch the ball. You know there's going to be some traffic somewhere. They've got to put it away and secure it as they try and get downfield. And now Dallas gets set to take the field. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just I like the way you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. And he'll be brought down at about the 42. And he got half of what he needed there, two yards, and it'll bring up a third and two more. Well, that's all about doing the dirty work right there defensively. Second and short yardage, that's all about plugging those gaps, not giving the running back a crease to run through. It has a nice job to hold him just a couple and force a third down. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And he gets it to the 34, good enough for the first. It goes as a gain of eight, and it moves the chains. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to. Pick up a first down. And now they got him for a sack. Derek Barnett in there to take him down and to take us to the two-minute warning. Two minutes to go here in the first half. We'll come back to Philadelphia after this. A reminder coming up at this and every halftime this season, we'll be checking in with Larry Ridley in Orlando for highlights and analysis of our first half. LR, that's my man. That's your guy. A second down throw for Prescott. And he hits Jason Witten, the tight end. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. Prescott from the gun. That is caught right at the 10-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Great mix of play calling so far. Three runs, three passes. All three passes have been completions. First and goal. I think on defense now, you have to almost take a chance. Rely on your scouting. Pick a play you think they would run here and just load up for it and see what happens. That is caught at the seven-yard line. And he's able to get this down to the five-yard line before he's out of bounds. That'll bring up second and goal after the gain of five. And there's another completion to the tight end. And let's face it, it is hard to overthrow a six-foot, six-inch target. <laughs> it is indeed. Quarterbacks like their speed guys. They like that huge six-six target that they've got in him. They really do. And it reminds me of what one great tight end told me once. And he's taken to the ground, but he was pulled down by the face mask. Here come the flags. And I believe this is going to be a first down. Face mask. So that flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it, that's going to be 15 yards. Hey, hey, hey. And again, it's Prescott. And he is going to go down. Back at the 11-yard line. And the eighth play on this drive coming up. Prescott now on second down. And the hit jarred it loose. 
It's incomplete. The one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown them a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after them. They've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. Prescott on third and goal. And this is going to be incomplete. Let's give this defense some credit now. They let the guys get downfield. But when push came to shove, they stood their ground. And now they'll likely force a field goal attempt. And Bailey able to knock it through. And the lead is down to one now at 14-13. And that field goal caps an 11-play drive. That's a lot of offense to run to only get three points, but they'll take them. Anytime you can put anything on the board, you run to your sideline somewhat happy. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. Philadelphia getting sent to take the field. Now, last drive, obviously not what you're looking for. You've got the lead. You've got to protect the football. So, in other words, someone got lucky because they've been moving the ball really well and wearing them down. In this case, though, giving up the football doesn't make them very happy. They can't wait to get back out there and atone for it. Yeah, try to atone for it here on this drive. Play action. Now wins. And he finds a man on a crossing round. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the field. Now the Eagles will use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 37 seconds to play in this first half. Fresh set of downs here. Working from the gun, Wentz. His throw incomplete. When I watched that play, I thought about what my coaches had told me in the past, the biggest teaching point. Get your head around. Locate the football so you can make a play on it while it's in the air. That's exactly what he did there. That was nice. Wentz. Here as he's taken down, David Irving in there to get him for his second sack of the night. They fake the give, now wins. Flushed out right. That's in. There is a flag down, so hang on. A big call coming on third down. Holding offense. So instead of giving them another third down, they'll decline it, brings up four. Now that's smart football right there. You don't even have to really spend a lot of time considering it. Just know that you're probably going to get the ball back. Good job declining that penalty. And his kick is good. Oh, he just did tuck it into the bottom of that left corner. And that'll move their lead up to four now. Maybe an anxious moment or two when the ball was on its way, but he does find a way to curl it in. Oh, yeah. That one definitely hugged the left upright, but he got it to go. Now it's Sturgis converted on the field goal. Now he'll send this one away on the kickoff. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. And with time running short here, they'll simply take a knee, and that should do it for half number one. So we have reached halftime here in the Thursday night opener as we'll send you down the coast to Orlando where we check in with our friend Larry Ridley and the EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? Okay, Brandon, thanks, and welcome, everyone, to our EA Sports Halftime Report. Let's get to the highlights. The Eagles are happy to be sitting in the locker room with the lead. The Cowboys just want to come out after the half and claw their way back into the game. So let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Now to the middle of the first. Jeffrey's got the reception, and he goes in for the touchdown to catch the drive. Offense now with the shot after the pick. The ball will pop out here on the run. Now following the fumble, 
Prescott's on target here, and this four-play drop goes for a touchdown. The Cowboys tied up at seven. First and ten, he'll get out of the pocket to complete the pass, and he'll win the sprint to the end zone. That takes the lead up to seven. So that'll do it for us. We'll go back now to Philadelphia for the second half. All right, Larry, thank you. A fairly tight game here as we get set to resume play in this second half. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. Out come the Cowboys now as he'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They're close, close game, but they're going to need to do a little bit better probably here in half two, no? I would agree with that totally. I would guess it in the locker room. They talked about cleaning up some of the errors, but overall I think they wanted to be positive with them. Guys, we're right there. Just not playing as well as we need to. Let's pick it up. And we still have a chance to win this game. Yeah, they do. We'll see if they can pick it up. And he is hard at the 36. A nice pick up there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. A first down throw for Prescott. The hook up on the right side to Hopkins. And some big-time hitting going on there. He is knocked to the ground. A good pick up there, 26 yards. And there they went crossing route against the zone defense. What do you think of that? Takes real coordination between the passer and the receiver because you've got to read those zones and where the open spots are and be on the same page with the guy throwing the football. Because sometimes you're throwing it in front of the zone. Sometimes you're throwing it between the zone. Sometimes the receiver's going to just kind of find a spot and what we call sit down and present himself to the quarterback and throw it there. It's a tough read, but when they're in sync, it's really effective. Give us to Elliott, fighting his way down to about the 35-yard line. Call it about a gain of three, and they'll be looking at it. With the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a front plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. And he's able to pick up the first down here before he goes down at the 26. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field, and now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and get the quarterback a really nice target. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Off the corner, where'd he come from? Well, I, guess, I mean, I guess he came off the corner, but <coughs> nice play. I like when you're able to pose a question and answer it at the same time. <laughs> That's exactly where he came from, but it's not something that you normally see. Most of the time, we're thinking about those guys covering pass catchers. In this case, he was a big factor in a run game. No gain. It'll be a gain of seven, and they get it back to a third and three. That's why the guy with the headsets is down there. All right, they know what they're doing because they got stuffed on a running play on first down. And I think myself and probably the fans were saying throw the football in this situation. But he knew what he was doing, called another run, and now they've got third and short. Eagle pressure too much this time. Down he goes. Brandon Graham in there to drop it for his second sack now here tonight. And that's the second sack of the game, but this player disruptive in all phases whether he's going upfield coming underneath you name it he's a big time guy you have to block oh they get to the football it's blocked now it's scooped up and, and i think he's gonna go they're not gonna get him past the 20 <laughs> 10 and he'll score touchdown eagles no lead safe in the new NFL, but this score is really going to give them some needed breathing room. Now Sturgis on to add the extra point. And that one put 
pushes the lead up to 11. Now after the touchdown, it's Sturgis to send it away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Dak and the Cowboy offense heading back onto the field. He has been consistent, hasn't he? He played well in the first quarter, good second quarter, and now continuing that here in the third. And that's the word that they're always seeking is consistency. Taking care of the ball, making sure it gets to the right people. No errors, right? Not turning it over and just doing all the right things. That's leadership, and it inspires confidence in a team. Yeah, been a good leadership and a good distributor. Was that a receiver? <laughs> yeah, actually it was. It was a running back who was a receiver on the play. Ike's been spending time in the receiver drills getting his feet down. Well, those guys out of the backfield, they got to be good, agile with their feet. He showed the agility there with a toe tap. No doubt about it. It's like he'd run to ballet school, got the toes down, and stayed in bounds. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. Well, so much for him being bottled up throughout the day. Finally finds a way to break through and get a really nice gain. The defense had felt great about what they had going. Now they've got to turn their attention to getting it back in that direction. Can they bottle him up again? Because I'd say after that run, confidence is pretty high for him. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. No gain on that run, and while this team is down, they're not out of it by any stretch of the imagination. Maybe you just have to think about a different style of running in order to get this guy going. Now flags fly in, and one of the Cowboys looked like he got going a little Post early. Offense. And that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. to the 36. They know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Fletcher Cox able to drop it for a loss of 12, and it'll be fourth down. My man, it's been a rough night for that offensive line, and it's only getting rougher. Five sacks now that they've given up in this contest so far. It feels like the witching hour out here, doesn't it? Okay, stupid question. What's the witching witching hour? Yeah, the witching hour. That's when everything goes haywire late at night. Out now comes the Cowboys punter. And surprisingly, this is the first punt of the game for either team. That's pulled in at the 32. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And the Eagles will have it taking over first and 10. The Eagles coming out as they get ready. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. He'll rifle this one deep right. It's caught inside the 25. And he's going to be marked down deep in Dallas territory. A gain of 39 that time. Well, it's easy to make a case that Alshon Jeffrey loves to run the post pattern. And the guy throwing the ball to him loves him running it. Right in his sight lines, great catch radius. He can stick the ball up there, and he can go out and get it. And he'll be brought down somewhat awkwardly here, and a late flag as well. I think this one's going to be a face mask. Officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that one looked pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a 5-yard or a 15-yard inadvertent or not. Now, it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. 
Well, the numbers have been good in the passing game and certainly a big reason why they have the lead. But now here, third quarter, maybe go to the run game a little more? Yeah, perhaps. I mean, after that incompletion, look credit to the defense for shutting them down on that play. Maybe you try and run the football a little bit more in this spot. Good about how they've been throwing it overall. A nice run there. Eight yards moves him much closer to the goal line now for third down. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease, anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut. And he'll take it into the end zone for an Eagles touchdown. Zach Ertz from three yards out. And the Eagles add on to their lead. Boy, it's nice to have that big, reliable target you can go to. Each and every time. A lot of people see that position as a fallback. Throw it to them when all else fails. Not at all. This guy can make plays, and that's exactly what he just did. Yeah, play here for a touchdown. One after now from Sturgis. And the lead is up to 18 now. Sturgis out now to kick this one off. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. So out come the Cowboys now as their offense gets set to take over. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means they're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but a guy carrying the ball. He was the finisher. A really nice run. Another carry tonight for the workhorse, Elliott. <laughs> Ezekiel Elliott gonna take it the distance. Touchdown, Cowboys! Ezekiel Elliott, 67 yards. And the Cowboys cut into that lead. That's the score you felt they had to have here in the third quarter to get back in this game. And you know that there's an emphasis on their side. Hey, we know this. We know where we are. But sometimes that binds you up so much that you try too hard you don't get the score. A perfect combination of urgency, yet relaxed enough to get it done. And that one makes this an 11-point deficit now. One quarter remains here in this Thursday night matchup. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. And welcome back. We are in the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia. It's the Cowboys in possession of the football, but they trail here as we begin the fourth quarter of play. Bailey now to kick this one away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30 to the 33-yard line. Philadelphia getting set to take the field. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Wentz now on first down. It's complete on the bubble screen. That's Foster. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. Well, it may seem a little unorthodox to some people. Got the lead, fourth quarter, yet he's still firing away. I think he believes that's the best way to go ahead and win the game. Yeah, a lot of coaches say, let's just run the football and be conservative. He's sticking to his game plan. No, that is his game, and that's what they're going to ride. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Brandon, it's clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter. They're going to have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball. Made it very difficult right there. Now they need to repeat that effort. Yeah, bring seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take to slow them down. A good pick up there, 26 yards. Well, probably the only thing he did wrong there was go out of bounds, nursing this fourth quarter lead. You want to stay in, eat the clock. Yeah, you got to love the effort, the catch, the extra yardage, but you've got to know the situation. Stay in bounds, young man. They run with Pumphrey, and he's going to get this one down to the 30. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. 
Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Yeah, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this. Yeah. Tell you what they're looking for and make sure that they're still attacking, yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. On play action, Wentz. Nowhere to turn here, and he's going to go down. Back at about the 37-yard line. Demarcus Lawrence with a big-time sack on third down, and it'll be a loss of seven. Schmidt on to punt as he sends it away. Oh, and what a play on special teams here. This is going to be down inside the five, all the way down at the two-yard line. Now the Cowboys offense heads back onto the field. And that recipe on their last drive that resulted in a touchdown looked pretty good. So they'll be hoping to do that once more. And it takes me back to when we sat with the offensive coordinator and the head coach. They felt pretty good about their game plan and thought there were some holes in the defense and they exploited them the last time out. Let's see if they can come back and put together a similar drive. And we'll see if they can do just that. Holding offense. That one whistled against a big right tackle. You'd think being able to fire out and block, it'd be a lot easier to not commit a holding penalty, but it's tough to keep those guys right in front, isn't it? They'll run with Elliott, and he will forge his way forward only up to the two-yard line. Only a yard on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Defenses always talk about earning the right to rush the passer on third down, and you know what offenses want? win first down set things up for themselves better and that wasn't helpful there not a big impact on first down Again, they'll try to get forward but he's going to be stopped in his tracks at about the three no gain on the play there so that doesn't help now they're looking up at a third and nine situation and that's one of the few times they've been able to contain him he's had a heck of a game and maybe he's getting a little bit tired from how many times he's carried the ball but I always think back to what all those old coaches say. The ball's not that heavy. Keep carrying it, kid. Now Elliott had a short gain here as he gets it up only to about the six. Give him three yards there as that'll take us to fourth down. Well, look at the clock. You're down two scores. Have to go for this, don't you? And they thought that as soon as they took over possession. It didn't matter where they were on the field. They were always going to be in four-down territory. Backed up in good situation. It didn't matter. So they've been trying to force it to Hopkins, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Jalen Mills. And he is going to bring this back inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. That interception sets them up beautifully already in the red zone. And you can hear it all the way up here. Oski, Oski, everyone turn to block, find the spot. And now they're set up inside the red zone for their offense. And he'll take this one down near the 15. A gain of three, second down. Got to figure now, after getting that turnover, they're just going to be happy to keep the ball on the ground, right? This is where covering the football, taking care of the ball, all the ball security terms that have ever been used, they come into play for the guys on offense right now. Just take care of it, and they've got a good chance of ending up winning this game. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. A lot of contact going on there, and in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. And he's able to pick up the first before he's brought down inside the five at the four. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball. In trouble, and he'll go down back at the 12. Shaquille Barrett leading the surge there. He drops him for a loss of six. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. And this is caught. Touchdown, Philadelphia. 
think all teams probably like seeing that schedule for the first time. Looking at week one, oh good, we're at home. This is why you want to be home in week one. They're looking sharp. And I agree with you totally. That's what you want, but there carries a little extra pressure with that as well because you and I both know protecting the home field, winning your home games is paramount in this league. So you go into it, yeah, we want it, but now you actually have to go out and prove it. They have two sides to that coin and looking like they're going to protect it here in this one. And he's been a busy man, five for five now, as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. Sturgis out now to kick this one off. This will be fielded at the eight. Now pass the 25 to the 26-yard line. And now Dallas gets set to take the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you throw that out the window? I think pressure comes and down he goes. The Eagles get there for the sack. Fletcher Cox in there to get him for his second sack of the night. Time for a break. We're back to finish this one off after this. So the Cowboys in possession of the football here as we get you reset. They're looking at second down now as they search for a consolation score. Second down, Prescott. Bryant with a catch right side. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. A good pickup there, 13 yards as they get closer for third down. Prescott from the gun on third. He completes it to Bryant. Touchdown, Cowboys! Des Bryant, 69 yards. And the Cowboys get a bit closer. And that touchdown puts us in a position. Now, it'll be a two-score game after the conversion. Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt with a two-score game, they're going to have to onside kick it. We'll just see if they've got a miracle up their sleeve. And you wonder what onside kicks they're going to use and in what sequence if they hope to have a chance to win this game. And his kick is who? The drive there only spanning three plays. And it culminates in a Dallas touchdown. Two scores down, three timeouts left. Still a chance if they can somehow get this one back. And now the rookie's free. They knew they needed a miracle. They had to have that onside kick. They didn't get it. Well, as we knew, even before they put the, the toe to the leather on that one, their chances of getting that done, slim and none. And I do believe we saw Slim just leave the door, didn't we? We did indeed. I think we're down to none. Philadelphia getting set to take the field. And that last touchdown drive, a good mix of pass and run. Defensively, they just looked a little out of whack. And it's so hard to stay up with an offense that has things going so well where you're guessing and guessing wrong play after play. So what you need is someone on the defensive side of the ball leader, right? to make a big play. Yeah. Throw that balance out of whack. That's what you're looking for now. Not worrying so much about guessing what the play call is. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. Winch to throw. Under pressure, and he will go down. Sacked back at the 46. And now a timeout called by the Cowboys defense. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. Eagles coming up here on a third and long, so Wentz and company with some work to do after the sack. Now a play fake. Wentz. Going to throw right side here. Complete. Give him 30 yards there. Well, we haven't been 
been shortchanged on offense. Another fun play to watch there on the deep pass. This game has the feel of, what, a, a turkey bowl, a Thanksgiving day. You know, when we get together this year and the Davises and the Gardens get together, that's what our playbook's going to look like, like they're drawing them up in the dirt. And so far, it's working for both of them. Schmidt now as the drive goes backwards so he's on to punt it away and great special teams work here this is knocking on the door of the five they'll spot it at the six yard line and now Dallas gets set to take the field. Last time they were out here, they had the benefit of good field position, led to a touchdown. This time, they're going to have to work for it. They are, but with that last drive, that culminated touchdown, I think they carried out. And now Prescott is going to be taken down. He couldn't get away, and that's a safety. So that a double whammy. Not only do you have to give away the football, but the two points mean this is now a two-score game. And two doesn't seem like much, does it? But it means everything in this situation because now they're going to have to look back, and ultimately that might be the play that ends up deciding this game. Free kick out of bounds. Kicking team. So they will accept the penalty and move forward. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And tough going there as he'll only get it up to about the 31. Now a second timeout called for by the defense. That'll leave him with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. They'll run it now, out of the... So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. The Eagles on third down. They've converted four times out of six. Not bad. This will be third and six. On play action, it's Wentz. Well, this is taken in. It's complete. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Philadelphia. A big play there, 66 yards, and the Eagles had six to their lead. And to me, that touchdown allows you to start grinning widely on your sideline. I think they pretty much locked this one away. Yeah, that's the clincher, the proverbial icing on the cake, if you will. So they're going to go for two. Shotgun now for Wentz. And this is going to be caught. So add two more to the lead as they continue to pour it on here in the fourth. He hits the big target for the two-point try. <laughs> Defenses hate those guys, especially around the goal line. It's hard to decide who you're going to put on him. Are you going to put a smaller corner on him? Are you going to put a safety who doesn't have maybe the same coverage skills? How about a linebacker? He may have the size, but he's not used to really covering in space. That's why the tight end gives you... This will be fielded at the eight. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. And now Dallas gets set to take the field. They're down big here late. I don't know. You just one last drive here for pride. Some people like to do that. I remember playing for a guy once we were down huge and someone said, Coach, what do you want to call? He just waved a hand like Eagle pressure too much this time. Down he goes. Brandon Graham in there to get him again. The third time he sacked him here tonight. And he'll indeed get him to the line and spike it here to stop the clock.
The Cowboys on third down. They've converted six times and could use a seventh here. This will be a tough third and 18. They play fake to Elliott. Now Prescott. He's got his man on the crossing route. And he goes out of bounds across the 40-yard line. It's a gain of 20 and picking up the first. Clock management, definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agreed. They have to up the tempo in this case, down a couple of scores. Want to make sure they have a chance to win this ball game. Looking to throw. Prescott. And that's going to wind up incomplete. However, we do have a flag down. Let's check in with our referee. Well, he was just trying to contain DeAndre Hopkins, and he got a little too close. And because of his ability to line up in different spots on the field and come at you from different angles, different guys have to cover him, and all of them have the same issue. How do you do it without interfering? And it's intercepted at the goal line. Picked up by Jalen Mills. Well, my for the players, it's good for them to get that first game under their belts. For that first Thursday night game, also good for us to get that under our belts, wasn't it? It was no longer preseason. We were into the regular season, the first game of the year. And you know, all eyes were watching this one. Everyone was excited that football was back. And it's just special. You could just feel it. It's so good to have the pigskin back out there. It'll be crisp fall weather before we know it. You got that right. But I love the buildup to it, right? All day long. And then we got here and we saw a game, the first game of the year. Let's keep going. So for Philadelphia, they begin the new campaign with a victory here in front of the home crowd in the Thursday opener. And they'll get the weekend off now as they get a little extra time to prepare to face the Chicago Bears. Meanwhile, for the Cowboys, they obviously fall to 0-1 with the defeat. And they'll try again next week at home against New England. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. The Eagles are winners.